Hello class, this is Ms. Augustine, and today we're going to jump into Chapter 2, which is about matter. So in Chapter 1, we learned about what chemistry is, what the branches of chemistry are, what we talk about when we're talking about chemistry, and today we're going to delve into matter. So what is matter, as opposed to what's the matter? What is matter? Matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So, what is mass? Mass is the amount of matter that an object contains, the amount of stuff in an object. So, if you think about it, if I asked you which one has more mass, a beach ball or a bowling ball, most people would conclude that a beach ball has less mass and a bowling ball has more mass. So it has more stuff in it. So then we talk about mass versus weight. Mass is the amount of matter that something has, while weight is really a measure of the force of gravity on an object. This leads to a Ms. Augustine example. So right now here standing in my office, at home, I have a specific amount of mass associated with my body. If I were to jump on a scale, it would tell me what my weight is on planet Earth. Now, imagine Ms. Augustine puts on a spacesuit and climbs into a rocket and gets transported to, for instance, the moon. Now, some through some miracle of science, I'm able to bring my bathroom scale with me, throw it down on the surface of the moon, and step out of my spaceship and step onto my scale. I will weigh less on the moon than I weigh on Earth, but I haven't lost any of my mass. Sadly, it's all still there. So my moon weight is, I think, a quarter of what it is on the earth. So again, when you uh, look back at old videos of people bouncing around on the moon or astronauts, they were able to jump around because there was less gravity pulling them down. And if I were to go to another planet, some planets have gravity that's four times that of earth. So my weight there would be four times my earth weight. Whereas if I went to a planet that had less gravity than Earth, then I would have less weight. But the mass is all still there. I haven't lost any of it. So mass is the amount of matter where weight is really the force of gravity on an object. It's a measure of that. So after I turned 50, I decided to just report my moon weight from there on out because I liked that number better than my Earth weight. So what would have more matter, my volleyball or my bowling ball? So what would have more matter, a cubic inch of gold or a cubic inch piece of aluminum? So the answer here would be the bowling ball has more matter than the volleyball because the volleyball is filled with air and air is less dense. And my aluminum has less matter than my gold because aluminum is less dense than gold. The more dense a substance is, the more matter it contains. So that leads us to talking about volume, because if we're going to talk about density, we have to talk about mass and volume. And you learned about density at the junior high. So what is volume? Volume is the amount of space an object takes up. Matter that is uniform and has a definite composition is called a substance. Pure substances contain only one type of matter. So that leads us then to talking about states of matter. And in general, you've probably talked about states of matter, so you know the difference between a solid and a liquid and a gas. And at the beginning of the year, we talk very, very generally about the states of matter. And then 
uh, later on this year in the spring, we'll spend a whole chapter talking about the states of matter, solids versus liquids versus gases. So our three states of matter are solid, liquid, and gas. There's a fourth state, plasma, which textbooks talk about and we talk about, but we really don't spend very much time on plasma. You know what a plasma is if you've ever seen a lightning bolt. That's a great example of plasma. So let's do this one at a time, solid. Solids have a definite shape. They have a definite volume. They do not take the shape of their container. They stand alone. Whereas liquids are the form of matter that flows. They have a definite volume, but they have an indefinite shape. So liquids will take the shape of their container. Most liquids are incompressible. That means not compressible. And they mostly expand when they are heated. Now gases take the shape of their container and take the volume of their container. So that would mean that they have no definite shape and no definite volume. In fact, they expand to fill whatever container they happen to be in. And in general, gases are compressible. So then we can ask ourselves, what's the difference between a gas or a vapor? So you've heard us, or folks, people, the world, talking about, for instance, a sodium vapor or a mercury vapor lamp. And then you've heard of people talking about hydrogen and oxygen. You don't hear people necessarily referring to oxygen gas or hydrogen gas. And so there's a difference. What is the difference between a gas and a vapor? So gases are substances that are a gas at room temperature. Vapors are the gas state of a substance that is normally a liquid or solid at room temperature. So oxygen and hydrogen are elements that are gases at room temperature. Whereas mercury vapor is called that because at room temperature mercury is a liquid. And a sodium vapor lamp is called that because sodium is a solid at room temperature. So if you're not a gas at room temperature, your gas phase or gas state is referred to as a vapor. So we talk about water vapor because at room temperature, water is a liquid. So that concludes the beginning part of chapter two. So this is Ms. Augustine. I'm going to sign off and there will be a second video about chapter two and it will be called something unique like chapter two, part two. Again, this is Ms. Augustine signing off.